through all the best tips, tools, and tricks that you can use for your channels here in the civic space. So just an agenda for today, uh, setting up secure Google accounts as a team, appearing in Google search, improving that website with Google uh, website tools, then engaging with your audience on YouTube, and then putting all those things together for a robust presence. So let's get started. All right, so setting up a secure Google account as a team. So here, uh, we want to make sure that you have Google accounts that reflect the nature of you and your team's work. So you have you up top, and then we have the comms team here. So you'll use your official accounts, kind of that campaign account, that official account, your organization to claim your knowledge panel, manage your YouTubes, and run Google Ads. Additionally, we have your individual account as a staffer. So that account that you'll uh, get at work, you'll use that to manage your drive, create docs for work, and then also run on those Hangouts. Also make sure you're logging in on Chrome. And then that personal Google account. So that's your Gmail account, you know, kind of that John or Sally at gmail.com. Use that to uh, use your Gmail, your drive, and watch YouTube on your own. Uh, make sure you're uh, looking to log in in, in an incognito window just for separate work streams. So in order to secure those Google accounts, uh, make sure that on your office level, you're storing your password security securely with a password manager, not on just some spreadsheet. Use something like a OnePass. And then on your individual accounts, uh, make sure you're using a two-step verification process um, and you know, really making sure that you have that higher level of security on your accounts to protect you against nefarious actors. So in order to actually do a security checkup on your account, all you have to go do is log into your account, hit manage account, and it'll take you to your security checkup. So you can see if two-step verification is enabled, you can see if uh, how many of your devices you're logged into. Uh, you can also see those recent security events. So if you've logged in, or somebody that you may not even know is logged in, you can see those right here and uh, confirm or deny that that was actually you. Uh, so g.co slash security checkup. Additionally, you can add greater security to your personal Google accounts through Google's Advanced Protection Program. So the purpose here is really to increase security, put on those safeguards for the most at-risk accounts uh, for targeted attacks. So that's government officials, uh, political teams, journalists, activists, business leaders, folks with high levels of information that people may find interesting. Um, so kind of those features of the Advanced Protection Program, uh, the use of a physical security key or FOB to prevent phishing, uh, limiting data sharing across apps to prevent breaches, and also that strong vetting of account recovery requests. And then also it allows for deep scanning for incoming documents to really prevent malware from getting through. Uh, so a great feature, Advanced Protection Program. If you want to learn more, go to google.com slash advanced protection. All right, so here's some resource links that you can uh, check out for further information about setting up your Google account and making sure that it's done securely. All right, so moving on, uh, appearing in Google search. We're going to talk about all the ways that your organization or your principal can appear in Google search. So first, how does Google search work? First, here is a Google search ad. Next, we see our organic results. Of course, this is a search of our first president, George Washington. And you can see right on his knowledge panel here uh, some important facts and figures about him. Additionally, you can see his uh, business profile through Google My Business. So how do you use those tools to establish your organization on Google Search? Well, first, you can claim your knowledge panel. So uh, knowledge panels really spotlight uh, official information on public officials, candidates, and organization. So first, sign in and find your knowledge panel on desktop. Uh, Google your principal or your organization. Uh, you can see all of the factors that we just went over in search. Uh, navigate the cursor to uh, the knowledge panel and right at the bottom of it, it'll say claim this knowledge panel. Ensure you click on the button and it will take you through the claiming flow. So you'll uh, arrive to the get verified page. Make sure you click on get verified. Then uh, option A and option B to get verified. Uh, if it presents you with 
a, a slew of third-party sign-ins, make sure that you're just authenticating that you are a member of that organization so that somebody uh, coming in from off the street can't claim the knowledge panel of your organization, but really it's owned by somebody uh, that's close to your organization. Uh, one note here, ensure that you're signed into that shared Google account for your organization that we talked about at the top. Uh, it's really important to keep the knowledge panel within the organization uh, instead of on a personal Gmail or uh, account of that nature. Uh, the, op the other option, uh, if you don't see these verification methods, uh, you can go through the Get Verified process uh, on option B, which you see on the right-hand side. As you complete the verification process, you'll see a uh, claimed knowledge panel right here. So looks very similar to what you saw before, except for you are now verified on Google. Um, it really gives you the ability to suggest edits and make sure that the most authoritative information is there about your organization. So how do you do that? Well, uh, follow the steps right here. Uh, make sure your web and activity is on uh, to ensure that you can suggest edits. Uh, you see an example right here. On the top of your knowledge panel, it'll say suggest an edit. Uh, you can navigate. Of course, you can uh, suggest edits uh, to factual information, and it will be reviewed by a live team. Uh, of course, you must be logged into your Google account that owns the knowledge panel to do so. Some cool things that you can do to make edits. Uh, some common edits we see is updating the profile photo, uh, so the one in the upper right-hand corner of the panel there. Uh, you know, providing uh, different URLs to social channels, um, adding additional education expertise, and kind of updating those links. So those are some really popular edits that we've seen. Of course, there are other edits that are possible, but these are some common ones that we found. So here are some of the details, um, changes that you can do. So you can change your featured image. Um, you cannot change the title that pops up right under it, uh, but you can uh, edit your social profiles, things like that. Um, additionally, some more information how Google actually reviews the suggestions, but like I mentioned, it is reviewed by a live team. All right, so here's some resource links uh, for Google's knowledge panels. Uh, you know, more information on how to go through the claiming flow, how to suggest feedback on that panel, and then, of course, uh, contacting the knowledge panel team if you do face any uh, issues as suggesting edits or anything going through the claiming flow. So those links are right here. Uh, make sure to dive into those. All right, uh, next tool we have to establishing your presence on Google is to create a business profile for your organization through Google My Business. So Google My Business is pictured here. Uh, this is George Washington's Google My Business profile. So we'll see the steps on how to actually set that up. So business profiles really make it easy to welcome constituents, visitors, and volunteers looking for your office online. Uh, you can have uh, multiple office locations, and it'll really populate based on where the user is in search. So if they're in Washington, D.C., it may populate an office in the capital. However, if they're back in the district, search may populate the office that's closest to them. But really, you can take your users inside with you to the office. So those photos that you want to showcase of the office, you know, really showcase your work, your constituency, those folks that run the day-to-day -day operations of your office. Uh, you can also uh, provide quick links for folks, uh, how to call, get directions, and uh, navigate to your website as well, making it all easy and a one-stop shop. So how to get started, uh, go to the website below, google.com slash business. Sign into your Google account, that shared Google account that we talked about at the top uh, today. Then select your office or add it. Uh, write the office name as you want it to appear on Google. So for example, Office of Congressman Smith. Uh, and it may appear in a drop down list if it already has been populated by a Google business listing. Then enter your office's details. Uh, check if your off office serves constituents at different locations and the timing of those. Uh, additionally, make sure that you're claiming with the address 
uh, that's shown. Uh, one piece, when you may shift offices during different sessions, uh, make sure you claim with the address that currently exists on the Google My Business profile, uh, not the one that you want it to be. You can change it after once you have claimed uh, the particular um, Google My Business listing. All right, next, make sure you put an office category. Uh, for most, it'll be a government office or advocacy group. Uh, so make sure you uh, place that right in here. Next, enter your phone number and your website, uh, really the place where voters and constituents can uh, get in touch with you. Next, uh, verify your connection with the office. Uh, you have to confirm that you really are authorized to uh, manage this Google My Business listing and you are an authorized member of the office. Next, click Verify Later. Uh, you'll use a separate form uh, to uh, go through the process as a and as a political entity. So you'll use this form. Uh, it's for ex expedited verification. Uh, use your Google username, uh, which is the completed email address associated with the listing. Uh, and you'll see that uh, on the link down here, g.co slash grow slash on the map. Uh, so make sure to submit this form for expedited verification. And with that, you're all signed up for your Google My Business account. Uh, we have many ways that you can uh, update and uh, really hone your presence on Google My Business. But one great way to post on the go is through our app. It's free of charge and uh, you can post things right on the go. Uh, make sure that you're really catering to those who are uh, looking you up on Maps. So here are some resource links for Google My Business. Uh, make sure that you can manage multiple uh, office listings. So for those with maybe an office in Washington, D.C., and those back in a district office, perhaps, uh, this might be a great place to uh, really delve into how to manage those accounts. All right, next tool, practice search engine optimization. So I have a ton of resources here uh, really to dive into how search works, how you can really increase your presence on search, and really get into that search engine optimization. So check out all these links here um, to appear in organic search results. The next tool I have is uh, really message what constituents are searching on Google Trends. So you can see what's trending on Google search by going to trends.google.com. Uh, you can see US daily trends. You can see real time search trends, what's happening in the last 24 hours, live right on your computer or mobile phone screen. You can also compare policy issues with Google trends in your state or metro area to really understand what constituents care about. So you can compare up to five issue areas at a time. Uh, you see here we have immigration, healthcare, economy, and education. Uh, this is in Iowa over the past 12 months. And you can kind of see the ebbs and flows of what folks are searching. So here you see a really large spike uh, on immigration. Here you see a large spike on education. So really get a sense of what your constituents care about uh, by going straight to the source. Looking at Google Trends, we always say that search demonstrates intent. So if your constituents really care about something, most likely they'll search for it. So understanding those keywords and topics that they're using is vitally important to your messaging and your policy areas. Here are some more resource links on Google Trends. Uh, really understand what your constituents are searching for. Uh, I really recommend just taking some time and plunking in some keywords to uh, figure out some things that your boss or you may just be personally interested in. All right, so my next tool for you, uh, have Google highlight your website events directly on Maps and Search. So Google's now servicing website events in Maps and Search. So your boss has a teletown hall or your organization is hosting an event for its activists. You can show up right here in Maps and in Search. So how do you do that? Um, well, here are some instructions here to get started. Uh, make sure you have the correct website markup uh, to ensure that you're highlighting those events uh, on Google Search and Google Maps. All right, so moving on, we're going to improve your website with some Google website tools. 
All right, so I have two great things to share with you about website tools. First, uh, improving your website through Google Analytics, and then also protecting that website through Project Shield. So first, Google Analytics. Google Analytics aims to answer questions about your website for you. You don't have to guess, you don't have to do just a gut check, you can have the data behind what viewers and users actually are doing on your website. So uh, what are the demographics of your website? Where are they from? What are they interested in? What site were they on before they came to your website? Did they search for your organization and get to your website through uh, Google search? Did you send out a press release and they came to your website through that? How did they actually get there? And then once they're on your website, what do they do when they actually land there? All questions that you can answer by Google Analytics. So Google Analytics really makes it easy to understand how people engage, are engaging with your content on your website. Uh, you can actually see active users in real time, which you'll see right here, just as an example. Um, you can see uh, average duration, number of users, bounce rate, uh, all things to make sure that you know how folks are engaging with your website. So how do you sign up? Well, Google Analytics is free for everyone to use. All you have to do is sign into your shared Google account. You'll sense a theme throughout our presentation. Make sure you're shine, signed into that shared Google account and then uh, visit analytics.google.com or simply Google Google Analytics and it will take you to this sign-in page right here. Uh, if you've already signed up for Google Analytics, it'll take you to a dashboard uh, which you saw on my previous slides. So first, select sign up. Then fill out the form to get your tracking ID. Um, so ensure you have a name for your website, especially if you have multiple websites under similar names, make sure you have tracking codes for those. Uh, enter the website itself and then click Get Tracking ID. Once you do that, it'll take you to a site that looks just like this. Uh, your tracking ID is a UA code followed by uh, some digits and uh, really having those pieces, so that tracking ID, and then also that uh, site tag, which is right underneath. Make sure you send it to your website administrator so that they can put it right on the website for you and then begin tracking the folks that are coming to your website and gaining analytics. So uh, specific to the government and politics space, uh, we really encourage that uh, you get the most relevant data points to uh, our space in general. So we actually came up with a template on uh, different metrics that may be of interest to you. Uh, all you have to do is download the Google Data Studio one sheeter template. Uh, it's right at the top here with this access link. So access the template, click on that, and uh, install the template right here. So hopefully you'll find that interesting. If not, you can customize your dashboard as you wish. All right, so 53% uh, of uh, websites are abandoned if a mobile site takes up to three seconds to load. That doesn't seem like a lot of time, but if you're as impatient as I am, you want your website to load quickly. So uh, you really should check if your website is maybe taking uh, longer to load than you'd like. All you have to do is go to g.co slash test my site and uh, test your mobile site speed. Is the navigation easy to use? Does it load quickly? Uh, is it really easy to complete tasks? Can they easily fill out forms? Uh, make sure that you're really maximizing those people that are coming to your website and not being one of those 53% uh, of bounce rates. So uh, make sure that you're uh, testing your mobile site speed. So more on analytics with your webmaster or vendor. Uh, check out some of our resources here. Uh, getting started with Google Analytics. Uh, transferring accounts. Uh, you know, maybe a staffer has left and had it on their account and transferring it to that shared Google account. Uh, you can do that right here. Some guided tutorials, uh, help center, uh, one-stop shop for analytics right here. All right. So uh, the next way to engage with your website is to protect it. So uh, talking a little bit about Project Shield. So Project Shield uh, really helps us uh, urge and uh, kind of combat those critical DDoS attacks. So a DDoS attack is a simple and 
inexpensive way to take a website offline. Ooh, it can be used to target critical and investigative work, silence journalism, uh, stop freedom of information during elections. It's a very critical thing to protect against. So uh, we want to make sure that we're preventing against many of these attacks that have been surfacing in the news uh, abroad. Uh, we want to prevent that from coming into the US as well. So Project Shield is a free service that Google uses uh, to help keep government, news, and election sites protected. To ensure that you have it um, on your site, uh, it's just four easy steps. So uh, advanced DDoS protection, uh, it's free and unlimited. It's customizable with caching. And it also has additional features, um, you know, real-time real analytics, um, really increasing that support. So a case study here uh, from Google Europe. Uh, voters look for information on candidates' websites, election monitoring sites, or use the internet to find out where to vote. Um, just hours before the polls opened in uh, this year's Dutch election, two of Holland's leading election information sites went offline. So um, you can see those sites were used about half of Dutch voters, and uh, they were targets of DDoS attacks. Um, so they onboarded Project Shield, which helped protect their website and helped users access information at the moment that they really needed it the most. So adding Project Shield to any sensitive website can really help protect against these takedowns and these attacks. So all you have to do to enroll takes about one minute. G.co slash shield. Uh, it's a comprehensive uh, setup that you can do just in one minute. Put your details. Uh, are you currently being attacked, yes or no? Um, fairly easy process for great protection. All right, so next we're gonna jump into YouTube. YouTube for civics. Uh, of course, many of you probably already have an existing YouTube channel, but we're going to go through tips and tricks, uh, the steps to set up your channel, and make sure that it really is the best way to reach your constituents and ultimately connect with them. So here's our agenda for the YouTube portion of our talk today. So we're going to go through an overview of YouTube, uh, how to build your channel, how to post great video with shows, and then some of those new features, and then we'll talk a little bit about YouTube Studio. So first, an overview of YouTube. So we all do these things. We sleep, we eat, we communicate, and we also watch video. So 82% of all global internet consumer traffic will be video by 2021. That's a huge number to think about, uh, but increasingly uh, folks are turning to video and YouTube is the place they're doing that. So two billion folks are logged into uh, YouTube globally. Uh, that, that's a large portion of our world's population. And here in America, there are 228 million Americans on YouTube in any given month. And that's how it compares to um, some other video platforms uh, across the US, uh, kind of looking at Netflix, Facebook Video, Prime Video, and Hulu, and how it stacks up. Um, you know, 228 mil million Americans versus the next of 148 million Americans. You know, really, this is where folks come to watch video. So YouTube is a video and a search platform, and it proves different in our goals between different uh, social platforms. So as you see here at YouTube, uh, we really prioritize views and watch time, and also that impression share, so folks that are actually searching for videos. At other platforms like Facebook, uh, the metrics that uh, have a video show up more often uh, really focus on likes and comments. But really, uh, a common metric that all social platforms use is really to reach followers. So um, getting your message out there, making sure that your videos are resonating with folks. Um, but there's just different tactical ways to do that on each platform. 
So why do Americans actually come to YouTube? Well, they come to be inspired. They come to get educated about things. They come to be entertained. They come to laugh. Uh, but government and politics content can also be inspirational, educational, or entertaining. So YouTube watch time is growing for all generations. Uh, you can see here, growth is up in every single category, uh, particularly adults 18 plus and that baby boomer generation. Uh, so you can manage your account on desktop, of course. However, 70% of all views on YouTube are mobile. So that means that folks are coming not only to YouTube to watch videos, but they're coming to do it straight on their phone. And the average watch time on mobile is about an hour per day. So check out the mobile app. Uh, you can see the home screen, search how Americans are really coming to YouTube to search for their videos, what's trending, subscriptions. Uh, you can see that all in the mobile app right here. Additionally, uh, since 2016, we've seen three times the growth in viewership in the politics and news vertical uh, than ever before. So kind of that three times growth. So not only is watch time increasing for uh, all types of groups, but it's also increasing within our vertical. So some key takeaways of what we talked about here. The internet will be 82% video shortly. Uh, YouTube is really where Americans go to watch video online. And that watch time is really growing across all avenues. And lastly, three times is what the growth rate was since 2016. And Americans are really watching more news and politics content on YouTube. Okay, so how do you actually build your channel? Well, first, you sign into that shared Google account. Uh, and you find your channel, upper right hand corner, and then click on My Channel. Next, uh, ensure that you have uh, your channel name uh, that represents your organization, that icon, and then of course a robust description that really allows for people to know exactly what your organization is all about just on the About tab. Also. YouTube is a search engine, so ensure that you put as much text as possible in your description in order for videos to be more discoverable. And we'll talk a little bit about that later as well. Also, ensure that you can add some channel art that really reflects your community. Have some constituents or uh, activists in the photo uh, to show some, some lively uh, uh, community on your channel. Next, ensure uh, you can upload a channel trailer with your leader speaking about uh, their position or just welcoming folks to their YouTube channel. Hi, I'm George Washington. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe here. Um, a short, you know, one minute video that welcomes folks to your channel um, and really tells them what your mission or your principle is all about. And instructions of how to upload that are right down here as well. And of course, uh, make sure to uh, email us for channel verification and a custom handle. Uh, so for instance, George Washington, youtube.com slash President George Washington, um, or whatever your organization or principal may be. So now that you've set up your channel, uh, ensure that you have all of the features linking to YouTube Live, custom thumbnails, and other tools uh, linking here below. Also learn about uh, how to upload videos, uh, proactive content uh, moderation through comments, maybe turning them off if you're uh, a high profile organization, uh, and then also editing videos, uh, managing comments, all of those links are right here for you. Lastly, now that you've set up your channel, make sure that you promote the channel. So uh, put it in your email signature along with your other social channels. Um, you know, ensure that people have really easy access to your channel, not only in that email signature, but also on your website. Okay, so is there a guided tutorial for actually setting up the channel? Of course there is! Uh, so go over to the Creator Academy and it'll show you step by step 
on how to set up the channel, but hopefully some of these tips and tricks uh, can help you along the way. Here's some more resources for your YouTube channel as well. Okay, so posting great video. I like to think of YouTube channels as a formula. So creativity plus searchability equals views. So the first part that we'll talk about is creativity. You know, uh, really posting great video to uh, connect with your audience and ensure that folks keep coming back to your channel. So we'll talk about the first piece of the equation right now. Some creative factors that work for government and politics. All right, so digital video typically has a different story arc than traditional TV ads or Hollywood movies. So we have the traditional story arc here uh, with a lead-in. So I'd like to think of this as Hallmark movies. So the lead-in, the girls walking down the street bumps into this guy. Oh, you know, they bump into each other a few more times. It's building up the relationship. Oh, but he liked her the whole time. That climax, the big reveal. Oh, how sweet. Then that call to action. Hey, will you be my girlfriend? And then the branding. Will you watch another Hallmark movie? Kind of every single time uh, that cadence is how we've seen traditional movies and TV ads. Kind of those 30 second TV ad spots. But on digital, it's completely different. So uh, digital story arc has ebbs and flows. So starting with your main talking point first. Getting those subtle brand cues. Maybe you have an American flag waving in the background or a photo of the Capitol. And then you kind of have that unexpected shift your principal talking about a key policy area or initiative that they're pushing. Then you have those multiple peaks, uh, those things to keep people engaged and grasp their attention. And then lastly, you have that call to action. What do you want them to do as a result of watching your video? So some key differences and points between that traditional story arc and a digital story arc. All right. So what content do people really want to see when it comes to government and political entities on YouTube? Well, folks want to hear directly from their government officials, from advocacy groups, in order to really connect with them in an authentic fashion. They want to really hear frequently, and they want to hear in line with the news cycle. And YouTube allows you to do all of these things in a very authentic and real way. So first, uh, how do you actually put all these things together? Well, uh, you can prioritize episodic content by doing a weekly or monthly address. So your audience really has a reason to subscribe and come back more than once. Uh, so the example you see here is uh, Love Your Enemies. It's a series by Arthur Brooks at AEI. And this particular video is about mean tweets, uh, a play on some late night fun that you may have seen. Next, make sure that you explain what you worked on this week for your audience. Uh, keep it to a few minutes, kind of change up the setting. Uh, one week it could be behind the desk or on the road or in the community somewhere, or maybe it's with several different people. Uh, also make sure you end it with an end screen that really encourages folks to subscribe and then use it as a series and add it to a channel section. So this example here is from the Fort Report uh, from the US Army, and it talks about a team member throughout the week. Next, make sure you prioritize direct-to-camera content that you film yourself, and lead with your most important talking point, and keep your video between 30 seconds and five minutes. We really found that that's a sweet spot for government and political shows. Uh, so here you'll see an example of Senator Todd, Todd Young, and within the first eight seconds, you'll know exactly what the entire video is about. So make sure you're leading with that most important talking point first. Just a hint, it's about Indiana basketball. Next, explain a key pi pri oh, excuse me, a key policy priority or legislation in an explainer video format. Uh, so this one right here is uh, Senator Jeff Merkley. He explains the Safe Lending Act. So uh, he keeps it to a few minutes. Uh, he keeps it visual. You can see he's standing right here in front of uh, a chart with some visuals. Uh, again, make sure you end with that end screen that encourages people to subscribe. And then again, add that as a video series on your channel. 
Next, take your audience behind the scenes with you. Show them that authentic work ethic, that video, so that they can learn more about their advocacy work. Um, make sure you're yourself. Uh, involve your community, involve others on your staff and your video. Um, this example right here, one of my favorites, uh, the Miami Police Department. Uh, they do vlogs every week behind the scenes with officers uh, on their beat. Uh, this particular one, uh, they get a, an award, there's an award ceremony, and then you get to go behind the scenes of Ultra Music Festival. Super cool, right? Next, uh, really answer those popular questions that your organization or your principal receives in a fresh format. Uh, so, uh, pull your audience uh, and communication channels to get these questions. Uh, use Google Trends to see what folks may be Googling about you or your organization. Uh, partner with an influencer or a journalist uh, for the interviews. Uh, get a constituent to uh, talk with the member about things going on in the district, but do it in a fun format. So uh, this uh, video right here is Marco Rubio. He's answering top uh, Google searches for Marco Rubio, and he explains uh, different questions that folks uh, have about him, and it's pretty great to watch. All right, so next, I really implore you to showcase local community stories. Uh, you know, partner with a family, soldiers, uh, veterans, whoever represents your organization, and uh, really showcase their story. Uh, so this particular um, piece is from Staff Sergeant uh, Travis Atkins and his final mission. His parents are talking about his legacy. Uh, so really showcasing those stories. Uh, and they're very authentic and you know, really get to the heart of what your channel or your organization is all about. Next, uh, hold a deeper conversation with a growing video podcast format. Uh, one thing that we've seen really take off is uh, podcasting, but take that online. Uh, make sure to record any podcasts that you may be doing. Uh, partner with a local figure, an influencer, to actually hold the discussion. Answer those popular questions that um, may be gathered through the comments or through community posts or on Twitter beforehand. Um, one, uh, one politician that we've seen do this a lot is uh, Bernie Sanders. He has a podcast called Hear the Burn, and um, you know he actually chooses to record it, and it's an episodic series on his YouTube channel. Next, um, with all of those different creative pieces in mind, make sure you take the extra, and I think easier step, to make sure that you add a custom logo that really doubles as a subscription button to drive those additional subscriptions uh, to those videos that you worked so hard on. Next, uh, make sure that you add a 10 second clip at the end of all videos, really encouraging folks to uh, watch the next video or subscribe to your channel. Um, here you see an example from NASA. Um, so get more space and you have the opportunity to watch two more videos and a subscribe button. So in order to attach the end screen uh, to your video, uh, there are instructions here. Uh, you can also add them in bulk via YouTube Studio. Uh, I, I will say that you do have to put it at the end of your video in production, and then when you upload it, you can add the components such as the subscribe uh, box here and the different videos as well. And instructions on how to actually implement that right here on the bottom of the screen. All right, so we talked about all those creative pieces, uh, but we're going to go to that, ex that next side of the equation. So searchability factors that work for government and politics. So revisiting our equation, creativity, which we already touched, plus searchability equals views. So now we're going to talk about the searchability side. I know you heard me mention before, YouTube is of course a search engine, so we want to treat it as such. So that searchability component is really important when you're uploading your uh, videos and really getting folks to your channel. So, how do you get your video surfaced beyond your subscriber base? So YouTube's algorithm is designed to match videos with rich text data to users actively looking for particular topics or videos since YouTube is where Americans search for video. So first, make sure you're uploading high resolution direct-to-camera thumbnails so your video appears in search results 
when people are actually discovering those videos. So here you see some photos of Hakeem Jeffries, uh, of some of his uh, different news hits, and they're direct to camera. He's smiling. You know exactly what you're getting from the video upon first glance. So make sure that they're uh, a custom image, uh, high resolution, close up, high contrast, really identifiable image. Uh, also put some branding in the corner, uh, that logo that you use for the custom subscribe button, great piece to use here on your thumbnails. Uh, just make sure that it uh, is of the people in your video. Um, we recommend to use that instead of maybe a graphic or um, something else that you may create. All right, so next uh, term of searchability, make sure you give your titles detail. Uh, so that they actually populate when folks are searching for those queries. Uh, so right here, uh, this is Will Hurd on CBS This Morning. The title of this video is Texas Republican Border Rep Will Hurd Talks Border Security Shutdown on CBS This Morning. So you kind of have that who, what, when, where, why, how in your titles. Make sure you prioritize these when you're uploading videos to YouTube. Additionally, uh, make sure that you create a robust video description uh, to index your YouTube content, to put it in front of a broader audience. So what we recommend is a two to three sentence video description, which you'll see uh, up on top here from the Patriot Act. And then below, uh, you'll see related links to videos, uh, collaborators, relevant hashtags, another link to subscribe. You want different avenues for folks to be able to actually subscribe to your channel and then kind of that uh, description about your channel. So what, what, a, what is your bio of the organization? What's your bio of your principal? Make sure you put that in here. And then also make sure you have links to social channels. So uh, you can put this on every single video uh, if you'd like. It's just in your Upload Defaults tab of your YouTube Studio. Uh, you can actually retro retroactively put this on videos as well uh, in your YouTube Studio by going to the Video tab, uh, selecting all the videos that you may want to change, and then uh, going Edit and then Edit Description. So you'll be able to see that there. Next, uh, make sure you can add captions directly to your video. Uh, you can do it via a caption file or automatically through YouTube so the whole audience can really understand your message. Uh, YouTuber, YouTube uh, visitors typically uh, listen to videos with the sound on, so uh, you do have that capability, but you know, really having captions can help with accessibility as well. And if you want to have them on all the time, uh, make sure to add the YT colon CC equals on tag uh, to your videos so that you can make sure that the captions are always on uh, and further enhance your searchability as well. Next, uh, make sure your channel is organized. So how do you do that? Well, you can create channel sections to organize your videos uh, through playlists. Uh, this one right here is Senator Tom Tillis. Uh, you see this channel section, it's his priorities. And then uh, you can see the playlists right below. So ensure that you have uh, one playlist per issue, issue area so that folks can really easily find your content. Next, make sure you share your latest video across your communications channels. Uh, really put that on your website, uh, a journalist email list, take a screenshot of the video, and then make a link in your email. Prompt recipients to actually click on the link, uh, say watch here or view more. <coughs> and then also uh, put that in your constituent newsletter as well. Uh, kind of do the same thing, put a screenshot of the video, and then say watch here if you're not going to embed the video. And then lastly, uh, make sure you upload the video natively to Twitter and Facebook. All right, so how do you learn more about YouTube SEO? Uh, right here we have a Creator Academy that can tell you all the tips and tricks of how to make your videos more discoverable on top of all the things that we talked about today. All right, so more resources, of course, uh, robust titles and descriptions, end screens, channel sections, all of that is right here for you. All right, so new features. So uh, new feature, one of them I'm gonna talk about today is YouTube premieres. 
So what is YouTube Premieres? Premieres allows you to schedule a video upload to be released to the public in the future within the existing video uploader tool without any extra work. YouTube automatically creates a landing page for your video viewers so that you can build hype, uh, send it around, encourage your audience to really tune in during that video release. Think Taylor Swift and her me album, uh, Ariana Grande, Thank You Next. All of those were premiered using YouTube premieres. So when should you actually use YouTube premieres? Uh, really to launch a new campaign or legislative program, uh, to premiere a new episode of one of your YouTube shows, or to really engage with your most excited fans during a video launch, or really uh, engaging with them over chat. I know in our space, we don't enable chat too often, uh, but this could be a great way to connect with constituents. Uh, you want to make sure that it is something that you want to premiere, so we wouldn't recommend using it for that daily live stream or something like that. All right, so uh, it's available right now in your existing video uploader. So simply just upload the video, uh, fill out all of the uh, tags and descriptions like usual, and then all you have to do to make a video a YouTube premiere video, you just toggle on the premiere video right here uh, where you see the blue toggle. So this is what your premiere landing page looks like pre-release. And this is what it looks like before, during, and after the release. So you can kind of see the premiering, upcoming, the video on demand, and you can see what it looks like here on mobile. And then this is what the landing page looks like post-release. So you'll see the video that you uploaded, uh, you'll see the comments as well, uh, and that landing page that it took folks to. All right, so now we'll talk a little bit about YouTube Studio. So YouTube Studio 